today, Kaylee and I are joining up to do a soil pit together. Luckily, uh, the physical, the biological, and the chemical sides of soils all are interrelated. You change one and the other one goes with it too. And um, so what I'd like to remind farmers are, about is that we have some of the best soil in the world is in Minnesota. And this is a graph of or the US and the darker the color, the higher the organic matter. And if it's lighter, it has less. So you can see that we have, they really are some of the best soils in the world. And the reason, I think because they are that, that we can kind of abuse them a little bit and not see the effects of it right away. Whereas if you're in some of these other states and you do a wrong tillage system or you do something a little bit wrong, they will see it and yield right away. We have, uh, we have some buffer systems put in place. So I'd just like to remind you that we don't want to see it blown away. Clay. Individual particles of clay are actually microscopic and they can, you know, they're just in the wind, they just blow away. And they've found our soil in New York in Central Park. And they found North Dakota soil there too. And we don't want to give our, our great black soil away. So when I get, every spring I go up in the airplane and um, I see things like this. You see the tillage tracks and the planter and maybe leftover from combining. And I always see that. This one here is wheat and soybeans. And you know, if you see green wheel tracks or that the crop is doing better where you have wheel tracks, that means you have fluffy soil syndrome. It, it's my own made up term. It's not scientific or academic in any way, shape or form. <laughs> um, and you can see here in the wheat that the wheel tracks are doing better. You can see in the beans they are too. What happens is that you're breaking apart structure, and I'll tell you why structure's important. Soil structure is uh, the aggregated soil. They're smaller than a pea size. If it's bigger than that, then you're looking more at a clod. Um, and this is a well-structured soil, like this soil pit, and this one is at the experiment station in Lamberton where we mobile or plow continuously. Um, what happens is Structure is built by microbes, which Kaylee will explain. Um, and the more you till, the more you physically break them apart. So in a soil that's well structured, you know, what do you think water infiltration is going to be like when you get a big pounding rain? Which one will have better water infiltration? Right. And this one here, it's going to pond because you have those itty bitty particles and they get uh, thrown into the pore spaces and plug up the soil. And this one here, the roots are having a hard time. If you look at roots and they're um, really bunching up like that and trying to get through cracks, they're spending a lot of energy just trying to get through that soil. And they're not putting out all the root hairs. If you notice, you don't see all the smaller roots along there. You see them zigzagging around trying to get through that soil. Uh, where this one, they will get through the soil very easily. Roots like to take the path of least resistance, same with water. And this one, not only will the water infiltrate better, but it will, it, there's small pore spaces to hold on to that water as well. Um, this picture I love, because now we can do CT scans of soil. So you take this soil here, this one, anything that you see is white, that's the pore space. And the pore space, we like to see continuous pores and that they go through, and lots of them, so that the water gets through there quickly and roots follow it, everything else. And this one here is a compacted soil that was actually compacted, I think, eight years before this CT scan was taken. And um, you can see that the pore spaces is not continuous. You can get a much more saturated soil this way. Structure is your number one defense against soil compaction. They act as mini columns in the soil, holding up the weight of equipment. So like I said, tillage just breaks them apart, makes them finer, makes them able to blow away, uh, wash away. And when you have a soil like this and you do, um, tillage, you're fluffing it up with air so that it would warm up quick. And so what's the load bearing capacity of air? Right. So tillage begets tillage. You have to keep tilling it up to fluff it up to get that air in there. Whereas if we do work with microbes, we can start getting that, um, the structure back. So one of the things when we open up a soil pit like this, or even if you just take a shovel and, and excavate a little hole in your field, um, the things that you're looking for in a well-structured, well-aggregated soil are just that it breaks apart really easily, right? You can go along, you can grab it, you can crumble it in your hands. 
the analogy that I like to use or that I hear often is that this is like chocolate cake, right? You have crumbs, you have even rounded aggregates of all different sizes. Um, yeah, take a feel. You, you, once you feel it, you'll know exactly what we're talking about, right? What you don't want is to, to struggle to pull it off of the face and then have it smear in your hands like fudge. That would be the opposite, right? It's, it's, we like those crumbles and that, those, those pore spaces and those aggregates forming. So, um, so just seeing the, the friability, the, the, how this soil breaks apart and, and at the same time, you know, holds together with those roots and, and um, those clods are, are all tied together in a net. So when, we, um, when we're looking at those aggregates, I mean, it's a really good indication of structure. The soil is stabilized. It's not going to blow away. It's not going to wash away. Um, it's, it's very strong in that form. And the things that are, you know, it's a good indication of soil health and quality because it's, a, it's an integrator of all of the good things that are happening in soil that we want to see. Um, so, you know, we can, we can see those with our eye, we can feel them, um, we can dunk them in water and let them sit all day, and at the end of the day they'll still be holding that form. That's a good kind of test. Um, and that's something that we can, we can assess with our eye and with our hands and by, by looking at the soil. And this is like a microscopic view of an aggregate or what's happening in that soil structure. So you have some roots, you have fungal hyphae that are out exploring the soil. Um, those, those structures are serving as nets that are kind of binding the soil together physically. Those roots are also emitting uh, exudates, carbohydrates and proteins that act like glue to hold soil particles together. You can get things like, you know, mites or microarthropods, small insects, big insects, earthworms. Um, you can have little pockets of water that create a totally different habitat for a totally different group of species. You know, things like nematodes and protozoans that, that like the water. And then if you zoom in a little bit farther, then you're even seeing, you know, the, bi uh, the bacteria that are as big as clay particles. They're just teeny tiny and little particles of organic matter. And all of those things are working together to create that structure and, and stabilize the soil. How many of you guys are farming yellow clay? Yeah, um, that means you lost the topsoil and that you're farming this down there. And the problem with that down there, it has a higher calcium content. It has uh, more salts as you go west. It uh, doesn't have the organic matter content in it. So your N, your, well, your nitrogen, sulfur, and phosphorus are lower, much lower. So um, let's take a look at this pit a little deeper. You know, we're looking at the surface. We see lots of roots. That's what we like to see. It's, it's holding the soil together. Um, we have a lot of diversity here. This is a pasture, so we have this really um, netted rhizomatous lagoon in here. We've got grasses. There's some thistle, other weeds. Um, all of that diversity and, and that continuous cover is really doing a lot to keep that soil on the surface in place. But the other things that we look for when we're kind of assessing soil quality in a pit like this is that, yeah, you'll notice that the surface is dark. It has that nice, rich, um, dark color with high, high organic matter. Um, and as you move down in the profile, you definitely see the color change, but it's not like an abrupt line, you know? It's kind of this fuzzy transition from dark to light to more white. And, um, and the reason that that is, that is happening is because there are lots of, you know, the roots are creating channels that transport water and, and clay particles and, and organic matter down deeper in the soil. Earthworms are moving up and down and transporting material. And then we even have some bigger critters that are moving around in here. And so we were really lucky when we opened this pit yesterday to find that there's this kind of roundish circle right here of really light colored material that's been moved up um, into, the, into the surface soil. And that's not a smear from the bucket, it's, it's for real. <laughs> and that's because a gopher probably came through here and created a tunnel and moved the subsoil up into the topsoil. And then we have the opposite thing happening right here, right, where the topsoil's been located down into this tunnel. Um, and so that's, that's cool to see, maybe not in a, in a farm field, you know, maybe you don't want those guys hanging around, but, but it's a really good illustration of the amount of movement of material and cycling of, of matter that's happening in, in the soil profile. 
so the things that we like to, you know, that, that we like to think about when we're thinking about promoting this biological activity in the soil, um, I mentioned a nice, diverse, thick cover. So maximizing the amount of time and space that you have live growing biomass present in the soil is going to really help those, those guys along. This green biomass, this primary productivity, is the, is the foundation of the soil food web. So the bacteria and fungi and earthworms are going to come in and eat that dead stuff as it dies. And then there's going to be three or four trophic le levels of, of different species that are going to come in and eat off of them. And they're all interrelated into this very complicated web. And at the bottom is this, is this organic matter. And so providing that and maintaining it through the long term gives that foundation and the food source for all of those things to live. Um, the soil structure that we've been talking about is really good for allowing air and water to, to move in and out of the soil. You know, these, these microbes really like uh, to, to be able to breathe oxygen just like us. Some of them don't. Um, if, you, if you have a saturated soil that, that has water standing or completely, you know, s s um, full on the surface and, and, you, and you smell that soil, it's like a, a mucky, sulfury smell. And those are anaerobic microbes that are, that are blowing off nitrogen gas and sulfur gas. And, and that's because there's no oxygen in that soil for the things that are living in, in, in a soil that, that's able to breathe and exchange oxygen with the environment. And what that means for farmers is that when you have a saturated soil, you can be losing two to four pounds of nitrogen per acre per day when those microbes are taking off the nit They're taking the oxygen from the nitrate, but they turn it into a gas and you'll lose it. So that's what the anaerobic bacteria are doing. Yeah. So the best things that you can do to kind of promote soil biology in, in the soil is, you know, if I haven't said it enough, it's, it's living roots, production of biomass, keeping the soil covered and protected, um, reducing any kind of disturbance, whether it be a, a drastic change in chemical or physical conditions. You know, that could be a salinity problem. We have a lot of salinity in North Dakota that we're dealing with. And, and, the, and the microbes don't like that necessarily if it's a, if it's a drastic change. Um, so think about managing your soil biology like you would manage wildlife habitat. It's all about creating that habitat with air and water and food and, and an absence of any kind of drastic changes. And they don't like a temperature changes either. So when you have uh, some residue on there or some sort of cover crop, it, it keeps the soil from getting so hot, so cold, you know, at night and daytime. Keeps the temperatures more consistent. Same with moisture. And we open up four rows. We always open up four because we can always find wheel traffic and see the difference out there. And so I just go across with my knife and figure out where it's getting harder to go. The plow layer is harder. And you can see where the plow layer is. It's ending right here. And I hit wheel traffic. Ow. Oh, that's a good one. If it was dry, I could actually take it out. It usually is U-shaped if you have compaction. So feel the difference with this one. And then if it's wet, you may not see the effects of compaction. But when it dries out, I mean, you get the platiness and smearing. So the difference between these, that's why this one's so much more fun to play with. So we try to just help farmers reduce the amount of tillage out there and try to keep the cover as, as long as you can. And we've had farmers where they'll put in something in the fall, they'll put in rye, or, um, and then in the spring they get a little afraid of it. It's, it. You know, it's growing and so they'll do a lot of tillage to put it down and some people are like, well, then you defeated the purpose. But you didn't, you covered the soil for six months. And usually our crops only cover, I mean, we're not covered yet, right? You're lucky if you get about three months of coverage, of the, you know, full canopy with our crops. So we want to add to that. Two of the big things that I, you know, that I want to point out in comparison between these two pits is the first is probably, you know, I forgot to bring my root clod over here, but you'll just notice with this, this crop is, is still pretty young. Um, the roots here are really pretty uh, minimal, right? They're, they're just attached to the, the crop that's growing now. There's, there's not much going on in here. So, so really in this soil, the biological activity that's happening is probably pretty concentrated right in that rhizosphere, that immediate vicinity of the roots. Um, there's just less habitat here in this, in this case. And 
um, and that's because of the food source, but also the structural changes that Jody's been talking about. And the second big thing that is important to notice in this pit is that we still have this, this transition of colors, right? We have the dark soil up top and the lighter soil down below. Um, but you'll notice that this is a pretty abrupt change, right? There's not that fuzzy transition um, from, from dark to light. And that's just like a sure indication that this soil has been manipulated to a given depth year after year. Um, so we're not having as much mixing um, biological movement of soil up and down. Those roots aren't, aren't getting deep enough or, or staying in the soil long enough to, to create those, those pore channels for water and organic matter and um, other organisms to move down. And so that, that abrupt change, is a, is a, uh, it stands out to me as being a, a really pretty drastic indication of some of the changes that are happening in this soil. And, and I should mention too that we've got you know some residue here incorporated, um, but but this is this is definitely very different material than this, right? This is really high quality, high in nitrogen, high in phosphorus. This is easy for the microbes to eat. This is a little bit more tough, and this is going to take a little bit more nitrogen in the soil available to help break down this high carbon material. And if it's buried in here in this soil. With, a lot, with not as much air and water flow, um, it's gonna stick around for a lot longer. You know, we talk about building organic matter in our soils, and that's important, but just shoving this down below ground where it's just hanging out for the long term might not be you know, providing you a lot of benefits because it's just temporarily stored there. In these soil pits, you can usually tell what kind of tillage they do, and the moldboard plow one is a good one that you, know, you take the soil and you totally invert it over. And what you'll find is a, is a layer of residue just sitting down at the bottom because you took everything on top and just switched it down there. And farmers will say, well, when I tilled or plowed again, it came back up and it was the same color as when it went down. Well, then that to me it indicates that they put it in an anaerobic position where you don't have the bacteria really working on decomposing it. And so when you bring it back up, it looks the same because nothing got to work on it. So people say, well, you know, what am I going to see? When am I going to see the benefits of either cover crops or reducing tillage? And if you leave standing stocks, whether uh, from the cover crops or from the, the crop before, the primary crop, these act as straws in the soil. So the water will wick into here and just infiltrate very, very quickly into the soil. Versus if it's buried in the soil, it can actually act as barriers in the soil from the water going down. And so having them standing um, really helps out. Okay, so after a good rain and you, they need to go spray a field, which fields, what tillage fields do they go to first? Mulber plow, right? Because they'll just float right across. No till. No till, right. Mulber plow, they'll sink. Disc gripping, they'll sink. Matter of fact, if you know exactly how deep you till by how deep your tractor sinks. Okay. If you think that structure is not important, there's a reason why the pit is only this big. It's not bigger than the tractor. Why is that? We ruin the structure. We're now going to fill it back in, and he's going to drive on it in the spring when it's wet. Right. You'll lose the tractor. Okay. So structure, structure holds up your equipment. It's your number one defense against soil compaction.